organization, we get what organization can do. And that is something. When we depend upon our preaching, we get what our preaching can do. That is something. When we depend upon money, we get what money can do. And that is something. When we depend upon education, we get what education can do. And that is something. But when we depend upon prayer, we get what God can do. And what all of us need is what God can do. Education's fine and organization's fine and preaching is fine. But oh, I want to see what God can do. God can turn a life around. God can turn situations around. God can do anything at any time if we release him to do it. Let me throw some scripture in to make it verifiable. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh within us. What is he talking about? There's some faith working on the inside of me. I'm on it's fueling my Holy Ghost. And he is able to do exceedingly. He is able to do abundantly. What do you have need of today? <laughs> it's not what I can do, Brother Staines. It's not what I can do that makes the difference. It's what the Lord can do when I have faith to believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You got to learn to trust Him. You got to learn to trust him. Yes. Do you trust him? Yes. Thank you, Master. Do you sure you trust him? Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's so good to have Teamman here with us today. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy. Teamman one, Teamman three, Teamman two, Teamman three. In fact, won't y'all come up here? Y'all can help me today. I was going to use Jonathan today for this point. But when he found out he had to get out of his Sunday school class to help Daddy preach, he said, no, sir. I like my Sunday school class. He tells me he's got the best teachers, Brother brother Webb. Amen. And he already told me, Sister Martha, he misses you. Hallelujah, Lord. But you know what? Do you trust your dad? I mean, do you really trust him? Really? You have faith to trust him? Really? Step up there. <laughs> Don't face this. This is, you know, faith operates like a blind man. <laughs> now, first of all, I better, can you back handle this? Are you sure? Oh, well, I don't want you hurting your back, but I'll pray for it right now. Come on, come on. Do you trust that he won't drop you? Huh? You guess? <laughs> no, no. That's, now see, but that's how, that's how we operate in faith. The Lord says, do you want to be healed? Do you trust me? Well, I guess so. That's just, I mean, you know, you know what I'm fixing to ask you to do, and I mean, you know, and now, I mean, you, this man's been around you for 18 plus years, right? I mean, so he's always taken care of you and been, you know. But do you trust him? Do you trust your father? I mean, because you can't look back. You got to look at me and just, you know, if you trust him, he'll catch you. Do you trust him? Well, let's see if he'll catch you. You know, but there was that moment inside, wasn't there? But what if he doesn't? Go ahead, thank you, bro. Appreciate you being here. We're gonna baptize him tonight in Jesus' name. He's fixing to go serve our country. He's gonna get baptized in Jesus' name. He's gonna make sure his house is in order. Amen. Amen. But you know what? There was that moment while he was stepping here. I know I trust my daddy. But I can't see daddy. I don't know if he'll catch me. 
But I know he'll catch me. But I hope he catches me. But if he doesn't catch me, can I handle the pain? And that's how we are with God sometimes. Lord, I trust you. And I do believe, but we're like that man, Lord. I believe, but help my unbelief. And we have those moments when we're praying about situations. Lord, out of all the people in the world, why should you help me in my situation? Why should you help my disease? Why should you help my sickness? Why should you help my finances? And so the Lord said, just trust me. Lord, ever told somebody that? Just trust me. I feel like the Lord's trying to tell somebody, saying, hey, I got this. I got you. You don't have to worry. You can trust your daddy. Sometimes you just have to trust your daddy that when you jump. I mean, I had Jonathan... I had him ripped up. I was going to put him up here on this little pedestal here. I was going to say, now you. And he don't like to be up real high all the time. He's a little uncertain. But I said, do you trust daddy? And we worked on it until he decided he wanted to be in Sunday school. <laughs> Sometimes you got to trust daddy. Sometimes you got to know that if there's boogeyman coming to the house. Right. And I don't believe in the boogeyman, by the way. But if, if somebody's going to come to the house, daddy's going to be there to protect you. Yeah. Amen. Huh? You know, as a dad, you know, I'm checking the house out. I'm making sure it's, uh, you know, secured and locked down. And, and if I get to bed, you know, my wife makes sure that I have secured and locked the house down. Right. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In truth. And so why, why, why? Because the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Right. You like to do that with your faith. Yes. Amen. But you can trust your daddy today. The spirit of fear and doubt would like to take your seed of faith and have you bury it where he's unable to do what he needs to do. Come on, the Lord plants seeds of faith in every service. And God says, wait on the Lord and trust in the Lord. And sometimes he tells you to wait under a willow tree and, uh, you know, just, uh, just wait on him and trust him and trust him. And, and we're like, I, well, I think I will. I think I can. Oh, my God. Thank you, Malachi was a little guy. He liked Bob the Builder. I know none of y'all know anything about that. But uh, they always had a project. And they would say, can we fix it? And then they'd say, yes, we can. And there was always that one. Uh, 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 I think so. And that's how some of us are. Lord, you know, can, the Lord can fix it. The church says amen, but there's some of us. Well, uh, right. Lord, I, I think you can fix this. I mean, I'm in a lot of mess. There's a lot of trouble going on in my life. I, I think you can work it out. But I love it when I hear songs like, didn't he work it out? Yeah. 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 Didn't he work it out? Hey. I better slow down, y'all. Church will be <laughs> That problem that I had. Huh? He begins to work in that problem. That situation. That circumstance on the job. And your faith. You just get. Lord I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to let fear and doubt take the seed of faith. I'm believing God. You're working all things for my good. I mean your life has been laid out and planned by the Lord for I know what thoughts that I think towards you saith the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end he knows where he wants to bring you to then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart when you release doubt when you release fear Won't you look at your neighbor this morning and tell him, say, Jesus won't let me sink in the storm. I could preach a message on that this morning. Huh? I mean, Peter had the faith to get out of the boat. If that's you, Lord, bid me to come. That was his measure of faith. We all have a measure of faith. 
And you know, we all have that great expectation, Lord, of that you, I'm going to start walking. And we usually do, we start walking. But when we get out of the midst of our situation, when you're in the midst of your storm, I mean, you walk, you're walking on water. But then you begin to see the storm around you. And then doubt and unbelief start affecting that measure of faith. And you begin to sink and you begin to cry out to the Lord. That's the right thing to do because when you cry out to the Lord, He's going to reach down and that measure of faith you had is going to reach the measure of faith He is. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. The measure of faith that you have will reach out and grab a hold of the measure of faith He is. Come on, he is the great I am. Yes, sir. What is so so your faith is you know you're in a financial struggle, brother. No, I'm not saying you are, but you know, you're in the middle of a financial struggle and you cry out to the Lord, Lord, I need to pay my bills. I don't know what to do. And so you say, But I'm gonna trust you, Lord, and you reach out to him. He says, Well, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. All right. Amen. Every bank president responds to me. Uh, you know, every job situation, I got it under control. And all of a sudden, he begins to pour out the blessings on you because your faith reached up and touched his measure of faith. Yes. 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 And my measure of faith may just be like a, a bottle of water, a cup of water. You know, it's, it's, it's lacking. All right. But his faith is like that baptismal tank. You can jump off in there and get all baptized in it, swim to the bottom of it. Sometimes you just got to go a little bit deeper. Huh? What the prophet say? Well, I went to my knees and the Lord said, go a little bit deeper. Go out a little bit deeper, get to the waist, get to my chest. Get a Come on, you got to get out to where you can swim in this. And sometimes you may be overwhelmed. But if you're overwhelmed, that's the time to reach out and touch the measure of his faith. I mean, when you think about it, Peter got out of the boat and walked out to Jesus. And we like to focus on his failure. I like to focus on his success. Because he and Jesus walked back to the boat. So understand this. You may be out of the boat and you may be getting overwhelmed by things. But when you reach out and touch his measure of faith, you're going to walk back to the boat. You're going to walk back to a place where you can testify and say, the enemy was all around me and I didn't know how to get out of it. But the Lord, he saw me through. Hebrews 13 and 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that, and I like this, we always stop right there. And I, I like to read on in verses. We, we quote certain verses, then we stop. But even the next verse just brings strength to the last verse. And it says, so that we may boldly say, Hallelujah. Boldly. Yeah. Anybody know some bold people? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not rude, bold. Bold. Come on now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Boldly. Yeah. Get up and proclaim it yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Hey. The Lord Come on. is Come on. my helper. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Yeah. Come on now. You gotta have the faith to say, I'm not gonna be afraid. Yeah. The, Lord the Lord is my helper. Is my helper. Paul and Silas, you've been beaten and bruised and thrown in a jail. Yes. What you gonna do? Well, I'm just gonna say, The Lord is my helper. I'm not gonna be afraid. They can beat me, they can stone me, they can cuss me, they can do whatever they want. Hey, hey. But you know what? The hey. Lord is my helper. That's why the jailhouse rocked. That's why the prisoners were set free. That's why the jailer was saved. Hey Amen. You know, sometimes we get caught up in our minds that, uh, well, I, you know, the Lord, nobody knows who I am. I mean, you know, in Pentecost, I mean, 
You know, I don't have a name everybody recognizes. I'm not a Lee Stone King or I'm not a Wayne Huntley or, you know, I'm not Gordon Poe or, you know, you mentioned that, but he, he prays, man. It instantaneously happens. You know, that's, that's the mindset of people. All right. Right. Amen. Their faith's a whole lot greater than mine. All right. Hallelujah. But can I tell you something today? I mean, If Brother Bishop McLean was here and you had a need in your body, I mean, you'd have confidence. I mean, that's Bishop McLean. I mean, we know he's got a tested record. I mean, he's prayed for and people been healed. Hallelujah, Jesus. He went to a three-hour prayer meeting. Brother Goldair's daughter all the way in North Carolina was suffering from cancer. He went into a prayer meeting. and For three hours, he interceded and prayed. God told him it's done. He got on the phone, called Brother Goldair. It's done. Next day, the doctor came in and says, we don't know where the cancer went, but it's gone. Yeah. That's a proven track record. I mean, Brother what? That's, you know, yes, if Bishop McLean come pray for me, I, I, I got confidence, and he got a track record. Yes. And sometimes that's how we look at ourselves. We measure ourselves amongst ourselves. Right. Yes, sir. But each of us has a measure of faith. Yes. Each of us has the ability to make it. The other night, my tooth was aching. I know, I'm, I'm healing, okay? And I still love dentist. And in our devotion time, you know, we had our devotion, and, and uh, my wife said, well, we're going to pray for Dad. And that little fella and that little girl came over, and he took that little bitty hand, he just laid his hand right there on Daddy's cheek, and he just said a simple prayer. Jesus healed my daddy. Healed his tooth. And instantaneously, at that moment, it was gone. Faith. He didn't scream and yell it. I mean, he did. All he said was, Jesus and the faith of that child. Believing what he had been taught. God said, let me show you what I can do through some faith. You, you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is bring to the Lord what you got. All you got to do is bring him what measure of faith that you have, and he'll do the rest. Matt, or Mark, the sixth chapter and the 35th verse, very familiar portion of Scripture. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, this is a desert place. And now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. And Jesus, he answered and said unto them, give you them to eat. He said, you feed them. Isn't that just like the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? See, the, we always try to figure out things in the natural. That's part of our problem is trying to figure out a solution to our problems. Hallelujah. Versus in trusting the Lord. And I'm just as guilty as anybody. You know, the Lord put that male DNA in me and we're... We fix problems. That's what we do. We fix problems. Yes. We want to help somebody. All right. You know, and uh, it's kind of like a, a clip I saw of a husband and wife, and she had a problem. It was quite comical. She had a big nail stuck right in the middle of her forehead. And she says, I've got this intense pain in the middle of my forehead. And he's like, well, you, you've, you've got a, a nail. And she's like, don't try to fix it. Just listen to me. He kept telling you know, you just, you know, he wanted to, don't try to fix me. Just listen. There's something in that. But we like to fix things. We like to, 
you know, you bring situations to, well, how can we fix this? How can we, you know, instead of going to the Lord and saying, Lord, I need your help. How many, how many loaves have, have ye go and see? And when they, they knew and we know it was five and two fishes, a little boy brought five loaves of bread and two fishes. He brought what he had. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. I, I love how the Lord always works in order. They weren't a chaotic mess. Jesus said, now you put them in ranks of hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples and set before them. And the two fishes divided him among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Now you got to understand, scripture is very lean. 5,000 men. It didn't talk about the women. It didn't talk about the children. I'm not putting them. I'm just saying it, just, it mentions the men. So for 5,000 men, there were probably almost that many women. And there were probably twice that many kids. And the Lord fed them all. So when you're at the end of your rope. And all you have is some simple loaves and fishes. Let the measure of your faith be known. And watch as the Lord starts blessing it. Lord, this is all I've got. But Lord, I'm willing to give if this is what you require. Yes. That boy could have said, no, these are my loaves and fishes. Yes. Tell people go get their own. Yes. See, it's what you bring that God works with. Yes. Right. If you bring nothing, then you make and create a miracle out of nothing. But he really wants you to bring something. That's why he put in you a measure of faith. He doesn't expect for you to do more than your measure. But he expects you to bring your measure. In the book of 1 Kings is a very familiar scripture. And I'm trying to come to a close. 1 Kings 17 and 12. Elijah comes to the widow woman. She says, as the Lord God, thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. She says, I ain't got no cake. All I've got is a little flour, a little meal, a little bit of oil. I'm getting a couple of sticks. And her mindset is, is, well, I guess I'll just die. No faith. She'd come to the end of her rope. She'd come to the end of her line. I'll just, but do you not know that the Lord was watching her? And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me. Therefore, a little cake first. Just like a preacher. Huh? Oh, preacher. Here I am telling you my woes, preacher. All I've got is a little meal and a little oil. And I found two sticks. Because we're in a drought and the trees aren't growing. And I'm going to make me and my... And we're going to die. And the first thing you can say, preacher, is give me... You make you a cake first. Do you know what would have happened if she hadn't have done what the man of God asked? She'd have made a cake and die. And too many times, that's a lot of people's problems. They got just enough to make them a cake, and they feel like preacher. And I'm not trying to pull anything preacher's way, but I I've learned this because I'm a I'm a saint's kid. And I watched my parents sacrifice Amen. taking care of a preacher. But Brother Waddy, I watched Dad bless a preacher and God turn around and bless him tenfold. Amen. Never, never ceases to amaze me how the Lord works. Yeah. And so she obeyed the man of God 
And while others were starving and going hungry and making their last cake and dying, every day she got up, went to the mill barrel, yes. and there was meal in the barrel. Went to the oil cruise. There's enough for another cake for another day. Ah, look, there's two fresh sticks out there. Let's build and make a cake. She did according to the saying of Elijah. And she did eat many days. And the barrel mill wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. You can keep holding on to your measure of faith. And the Lord won't let you down. You just keep giving to what the Lord's telling you to give. Keep doing what the Lord's telling you to do. Amen. And he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. I'm coming to a close this morning. If you'll stand to your feet. Yes, Lord. Sometimes it takes a mountain. And sometimes it does take a troubled sea. Yeah. Yes, sir. There's two places where you can die of thirst. Come on, tell me. Two places you can die of thirst. The desert yes. or the ocean. Yes, sir. But sometimes the Lord allows us into those places. So we get to the point saying, Lord, I need you. I need you to move on my behalf. I need you to touch me, Lord, today. On the second day that Jonah was in the belly of the well, I mean, he was in a hopeless situation. Slowly decomposing inside the belly of that fish. He starts crying out. Lord I'll fulfill your promise. I'll do your will Lord. He begins to make pro proclamations. There's no hope that he's getting out of it. But by faith he's speaking it. Yes. Lord you know I, I'm in this situation. But I know you'll make a way of escape. Yes. And he begins to pray in that thought pattern. Hallelujah. And the next day that old fish just. Whoo, he goes to Nineveh, preaches, and converts a whole city. Because that was the will of God. What I'm trying to tell somebody today is you have a measure of faith. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't let the desert or the troubled sea. Don't let it destroy your life. But have faith. Have faith. Have faith. This morning I'm coming to a close. And I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know where you're at. But if you need today to come and just find a place in an altar. Not to repent but just say Lord. Here's my measure of faith. And doubt and fear and unbelief has attacked my mind. Attack my spirit. Attack my family. It, it's, it's, it's hindering my soul. But Lord, I, I want you to know I do believe. I do believe you love me. I do believe you want to save me. If you need the Holy Ghost this morning, I encourage you to come to the altar this morning and say, Lord, here I am. Here's my cup, Lord. Fill my cup with a measure of your faith. Lord, I'm asking you to touch us today, Jesus. I give myself to you today, Lord. I give myself to you today, Lord. I give myself to you today, Lord. Love the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. God bless you. You can be seated today. I want to say a great big welcome to all of our visitors and guests. So glad to have you here in the house of the Lord with us this morning. Amen. It's good to see family here that's not been here in a while. We're glad to have you back home today and glad to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm thankful for what God is doing. Now I've been announcing and I try to announce it several times when things are going on around the church. Amen. And uh, so uh, please listen carefully and uh, that way you won't 
not know what's going on. Amen? I will be leaving in the morning to go to General Conference. And uh, my wife and I and my family will be traveling this week. We ask that you would pray for us. Keep us in prayer. We'll be driving up to uh, Little Rock tomorrow, then on to Nashville Tuesday. And uh, we'll be there with the General Conference of the United Pentecostal Church and uh, working out the business of the church for our nation and our North American continent. And uh, just ask for the prayers of the church because every church matters. Amen. Every church matters. Amen. Then we'll be going from there, taking just a little time. We haven't been able to do that this year, so we're looking forward to that. Just ask that you would keep us in prayer. Next Sunday, Brother Christopher Cock will be here, and uh, he is a grandson of Brother uh, James Kilgore. Great young man. He's preached here before. You will not want to miss him. He's got a tremendous spirit, and uh, I believe you'll be blessed by that. Amen? Amen. So, amen. We'll know if you really love Jesus if you're here next Sunday when I'm not. Yeah. See, we just got preacher religion. But uh, I'm thankful today that it doesn't matter who's preaching. All right. All right. I'm coming to church. Yes. All right. Amen. And Because uh, I'm going to get something out of it. That's the thing about church. It's not so much what you receive, it's what you put into it. Yes. Well, praise God. You know, somebody says, well, I didn't get nothing out of that. Well, you didn't put nothing in either. You know, if you, you want God to move on, you worship Him. All right. Praise Him. Amen. 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 You know, a tree doesn't move until the wind blows. All right. All right. But the stump never moves. It, it's got to have some branches to wave. Yeah. Right. So if you're going to be a stump or you're going to be a tree. <laughs> All right. Well, praise God. That's a side thought. You can think on that today. But I'm glad to be here, and I'm thankful for everything that God is doing. And despite an enemy that tries to fight you, right. I want you to know you can make it. Yes. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. You can make it today. Yes. The Lord put a song on my heart, and I, I wanted to share it with the church. And so, Sister Brandy will get that started. I, I just want to bless this church with a song today. and It's encouraged me, and I hope it can encourage you. Give me plenty of volume up here. I faced a mountain that I never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you like I never have before. Sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a truck. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Oh, yeah. Your love is so much stronger than what else. Trust you and believe. Forgive me, Jesus. I thought I could control whatever life would grow my way. This I will admit. Has brought me to my knees. I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say. 
sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes a troubled sea. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Can you praise the Lord? Can you trust Him this morning? Can you trust Him this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is God good? Oh, he's wonderful. He's wonderful. <laughs> I love him today. I love him today. I love him today. I love him today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The Lord is on your side. Amen. We have to go through, through trials sometimes. Amen. But the Lord is always able to help us and get us to the other side. Amen. I love that song. It's a beautiful yes, song. Yes, sir. It's by a group called the Gaither Vocal Band. And if you want to find it, it's, a, it's worth putting on your music list. Amen? Amen. It'll encourage you. We're going to the book of Matthew today, the ninth chapter, and the 27th verse. Amen. If you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Amen. Thank the Lord for what He is doing. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I'm excited for what God has given me today. And uh, I appreciate the Lord moving, directing. He is a skillful surgeon, knowing exactly what our church needs. The Bible reads, and when Jesus departed thence. Matthew 9 and 27. Two blind men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. That's the question. Do you believe that the Lord wants to work in your life? Do you believe that the Lord wants to do a miracle in your life? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. And so today I want to take us back to the 29th verse. According to your faith. Look at somebody and say, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. I want to preach this morning on the measure of your faith. The measure of your faith. Lord Jesus, I thank you today for being in this service. I have felt your presence since prayer. And I'm asking you, Lord, today, anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear, Lord, and bring understanding to our mind. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, can the church say amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated today. Praising you, Lord, for being so good. Amen. Now, many have misunderstandings about faith. Faith does not 
save anyone. Faith is the catalyst for our believing in the Holy Ghost that is working within us. Amen. The word of the Lord lets us know in Romans the 12th chapter and the 3rd verse. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one to another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. And so Paul lets us know that each of us has a measure of faith. And Jesus said it was according to your faith. And you know, not everybody starts at the same point. Not everybody, amen, has the same measure. But when we join it together in the body, according to the proportion that God gives you, amen, you know, you just got to know that what I have is what God has given me, and it's enough. Oh, I'm going to have to bounce up on some unbelief today and some doubt. and You know, sometimes we, we look at ourselves and, and we say, you know, I, I don't know if, if if God is able to do what he says he's able to do. Back in our text in Matthew the ninth chapter. When Jesus departed thence. Two blind men followed him. Crying and saying. Thou son of David have mercy on us. Now you know something must have happened for those blind men to realize. That Jesus was there because they couldn't see him. The Bible says they were blind. Somewhere they had heard. See, there was something wrong with their eyes, but there was nothing wrong with their ears. All right, man. Right. Now, there's just something here I want to share with you. Too many times, our faith is hindered by what we see. All right. Right. I'm going to have some fun this morning. Too many times, because of what I see, I cannot believe. Too many times because of what I see, uh, it affects what I know. And, and now I, I can't believe because I see people doing this and I see people doing that. And, you know, it begins to hinder my faith. You know what? You got to get your eyes off of other people. You got to get your eyes off what they're doing or what they're not doing. And you just got to get your eyes on heaven. I want to be blinded to this world. I want to be blinded to hypocrisy. I want to be blinded by things that are not true. You know what? These blind men had only heard that Jesus could heal. Faith cometh by. And hearing cometh by. Say it again. Faith cometh by. Hearing cometh by. The so the more word of God I hear, the stronger my faith is going to become. Yes. Yes. I think it's a wonderful illustration today in the word of God where it was blind men that came to Jesus right. in this text. Yes. I'm trying to tell somebody, you need to get blinded to the things of this world. Right. And you need to get to hear the word of God. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Good priest. So Jesus says, according to your faith. All right. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yeah. But you see, when we see with the natural, when I'm seeing in the natural, I'm seeing sickness and disease attack bodies. Right. Brother Webb, when I'm seeing in the natural, 
I'm getting on there. You know, like one man, he said, you know, I had to learn to live by faith. Lord, in Jesus' name, let this ATM have twenty dollars. <laughs> Preach it, brother. Oh, y'all, y'all laughing. That, I always know when I'm getting close to home, y'all start laughing. <laughs> Come on now, because you know the finances. You know what what's owed. You can see it. Yes. You can see the ledger sheet. You can see the bills coming in. Come on, you can see the, the doctor's report. You can see the blood test results. You can see the CAT scan results. And so seeing sometimes affects our believing. You know why people leave the church sometimes? Because they see things and it bothers them. Sometimes we need to get blinded. In the natural. Amen. That's good. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing cometh by the word of the Lord. So if I want my measure of faith to be increased, if I want my measure of faith to be greater than it is even now, I need to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And when they said, Yes, we believe, it was according to their faith. Faith is, Hebrews 11 and 1, faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Yes. Hallelujah. You can't see things sometimes. You just got to pray by faith, knowing. Hallelujah. Faith is not based upon the state of someone's salvation. Come on. Come on. Yes. But on their ability to believe yes. that all things, all things are possible yes. to them that believe. Yes. That's why sometimes when somebody comes in, they may not be living like they should, but they, they ask for prayer. They ask for prayer. They have faith. All right. So they come in and they say, I, I believe God can heal me. We pray. God heals them. And somebody says, well, they didn't get right with God. How come the Lord healed them? Because according to their faith, they were healed. Many times, doubt and unbelief wants to come in and plague, especially of those in the church. The devil, his greatest weapon against the church is calling you a hypocrite. And the truth of the matter is, is we know he's halfway telling the truth. Hallelujah. But you've got to understand the grace of God. Operates through my hypocrisy. The grace of God, even though I'm not 100% all the time, He's merciful and graceful, and He gives me opportunity to come back to His throne of grace and ask Him for forgiveness. And so, devil, you know, you can tell me how many times I've made mistakes. You can tell me how many times I've messed up. You can tell me how many times I've failed Him. But as long as I keep coming back to Him, See, the thing is, is don't stop coming back to him, but constantly make your way back to the cross, and God will forgive you. He will restore you, and by faith, he will heal you. Yes, he will. That's good. Yes, he will. Thank you, Lord. I thank him for his grace today. Truly, we are saved by grace. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know that might mess with some theology. Come on, tell it. Receiving the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name on, is only one step of salvation. Come on, amen. That's getting me in the door. That's getting me where I should be. But it's the grace of God that keeps me. It's the grace of God that allows me to walk every day. It's the grace of God that gives me what I don't deserve. And it's the mercy of God that keeps me from getting what I do deserve. Come on. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got to be careful not to mistake the miracle in someone's life based on their spiritual situation. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Because when people begin to pray, yes, sir. Come on. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. And when the Lord feels faith, he's moved. Hallelujah, Lord. 
And yet we need someone. The Lord needs someone today yes. to believe that he can. Yes. I'm up. Huh? Yes. Amen. Right. Yes. Right. He needs somebody to believe that he's real. He needs somebody to believe this is truth. He needs somebody to believe that this isn't old fashioned, but it's still fa in fashion today. That it's still the Holy Ghost and power, Sister Waddy, and it's keeping me alive. It's not just emotionalism. It's not just going through the motion. But it's living by faith. In Jesus. Above. Trusting. Confining. In his. In his. In his. Not mine. In his great love. The great love he has towards us. Amen. That's why he keeps you. That's why he protects you. That's why he blesses you. Whoa. You know, we, we sometimes, after you've been in church for a while, you get sophisticated. We get too pretty in our praise. See, you mistake some things. I, I preach when you come to the house of God, it's like going to the court of a king. You wear your best. But there's a time when you Come just on. have to say, you Come know on. what? Come on. I'm not. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, hang on just a second. He always takes care of me. But there's sometimes you got to just take the coat and lay it at the feet of Jesus and say, I'm not bound by worldly robes of this world. It doesn't matter how much it costs, whether it was a $100 suit or a $500 suit. Lord, it all belongs to you. I'll shout in it. I'll wrinkle it up. I'll dance because I love you. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. It doesn't matter if they make fun of you. It doesn't matter if they laugh at you. It's according to your faith. Hallelujah. Come on, the world will restrict you and the world will hold you back. And the, Lord, the world will make fun of you. But if I've got faith to believe all things are possible, it doesn't care what the world says. got to get an enthusiasm to do radical things and have the faith to believe that God can do it you know that's what I love about new converts they get enthusiastic about living for God they they may just have a little faith they may just have a little faith and, and everything may not be right but their level of believing is High based of all what they've just been delivered from. They realize what the Lord can do. Sometimes you just got to believe in what the Lord can do. Because they, you know why new converts so many times have, have just enthusiastic faith? Because just last week uh, I was at a drug house. Uh, and I was miserable. And I was high. And I was intoxicated. And my life was miserable. But I came to the Lord. And all of a sudden he forgave me of my sins. And, and I was washed in his blood. And, and I got his name applied to my life. And I received this Holy Ghost. And all the ugliness. And all the worldliness. And everything that bound me got lifted and, and I feel free and I feel delivered and I've been set free so I can believe God for anything because if he can save me uh, he can save anybody hey. I mean that 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 uh, you know that that drug addict and that alcoholic uh, who's been bound by that for 20, 30 years uh, and now they don't have any craving anymore. Uh, they say, oh, God can do anything. Uh, he delivered me. Uh, or those that, uh, you know, needed healing in their body. Uh, and the doctor says, we can't do anything else, Sister Cynthia. We've done all we can do. Uh, and God comes in and says, let me show you what I can do. Uh, well, if God saved me from a sinful past, he can heal my body. 
or perhaps it was finances. Uh, you know, you know, I need the Lord to touch me. I need the Lord to bless my finances, and I'm struggling right now. But if he can save me, he can help my finances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You just got to have faith. Because if he can save you, if he can change you, then all of that's nothing. In fact, Jesus addressed that. I mean, the Pharisees got upset because he healed a man on the Sabbath. But they really got mad because he said, I forgive you of your sins. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, what's the difference? What's easier for me to say I forgive you of your sins or heal the body? We got to get crazy faith. We got to be like that old boy from Arkansas, Brother Myers. That new convert worked at a gas station back when men used to work at gas stations. You'd pull in and they'd service your car, check your oil, fill your gas tank up. Hallelujah. You know, rich businessman came in. We'll just call him Earl. Earl comes out, talking to the businessman. Businessman says, "Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go to the doctor. They tell me, you know, I've got uh, a brain tumor, and so I don't have long to live, Earl." Earl looked at the businessman because he just got the Holy Ghost. God just filled him. You know, he old town drunk. Now he's, you know, people used to laugh at him. All right. He said, can I pray for you? The Bible says if I anoint your head with oil and pray the prayer of faith, you'll be healed. Sure, you can pray for me. Earl got to looking around. It's worse than that, Brother Waddy. He couldn't find no good motor oil. The only thing that was available was some old motor oil. Earl didn't know nothing about dabbing your finger in it. He just walked his whole hand in there. Came out to the businessman and laid his hands on him and said, In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost that's in me, I pray that you be healed right now. That old businessman, he he, my Lord, you know, wiped the old wool off of him. Went to the doctor. Doctor said, I don't know what's happened, sir, but that tumor that you had is gone. Businessman went back to Earl and said, Earl, I don't know what was in that oil, but it worked. He said, it wasn't the oil. It was the faith I had to believe that God will heal you. You just got to understand, it's the faith on the inside of you that changes things. It's the faith on the inside of you that causes miracles to happen. If you pray believing. My, 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 my. Come on, the Bible says that she shall be endued with power from on high after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He didn't fill you with the Holy Ghost to sit on a pew. He didn't fill you with the Holy Ghost for you not to be effective. But he filled you with the Holy Ghost so when you're in Walmart and your friend from the past says, I got a disease in my body, you can lay your hand on them and pray the prayer of faith and the Lord will heal them. I mean, if you've ever been healed of any kind of disease, your faith should be increased. If the Lord's ever done a financial miracle for you, you should say, I know, Lord, you got my back. Hallelujah. My, my, my. That's the truth today. He's never left me nor forsaken me. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me preach just a little bit more. You ever heard of the 19th century British minister George Mueller? 
One day he looked down the streets of Bristol, England, saw hundreds of homeless children. He was so moved by God with concern for them that he decided that something had to be done. He had only two pence in his pocket. Two cents. He sees a great need. He's got two pennies. Two pennies. The Lord is good. Thank you for touching Brother Hensley, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching Brother Hensley's body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All is well. Just let him worship there. He's all right. Hallelujah. 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 Two cents in his pocket. He decided to start an orphanage. In 60 years, beginning with two cents, George Mueller took care of 10,000 orphans. He looked out and saw homeless kids. He could have said, but I don't have any money. He could have said, there's no way to care for them, to meet their needs, to buy the food. Instead, he looked at them and said, I'll reach out and I'll help them. Moreover, God blessed his efforts in a mighty way. He was an amazing man of faith, supporting his orphanages entirely through prayer. He never asked anyone for a contribution but simply prayed to God about his circumstances and the needs of the orphans that he cared for. Someone once observed that it looks like a hand-to-mouth operation, and Mueller responded, Yes, it is, but it's God's hand, and it's my mouth. He had over 30,000 recorded prayers answered. If we can just remember, Brother Wadi, that it's God's hand to my mouth. It's God's hand to my situation. It's God's hand to my disease. It's God's hand to my finances. It's God's hand. <laughs> you got to remember who you serve today. Hallelujah. Dr. A.C. Dixon said it like this. When we depend upon organizations.